Scorpio, do you remember in the Adams Family movie when Wednesday Adams was stuck in summer camp and in order to get out of where she was, she had to play along and she had to give a terrifying smile that shocked everybody? Well, that's the energy a bit like that for this month for you, where you are kind of stuck in summer camp and giving one last let's play along with this shit smile while you are planning something big in the background. And why is that happening, my love? Well, let's get to the cards and figure out why the Wednesday Adam vibes are strong with you this month. We'll shuffle them, wait for all the right ones to come out for you as usual, my love. And in the meantime, let's talk about these energies. So what the heck is going on? Well, we've a lot of retrograde energy this month. Dare I even say it? Mercury is retrograding this month and so is Neptune. We've already got your ruler Pluto. We've got Saturn and Jupiter retrograding. But we do have Venus who had been retrograding, stationing direct this month. So there, at least there's something positive there. But we've also got eclipses this month. The full moon lunar eclipse on June 5th happening in Sagittarius in your second house. And on June 21st, we've got the new moon solar eclipse happening in Cancer. And that is happening in your ninth house. So what's going on? What's happening as the first card comes out? It's like, yes, I want to get in that boat and sail away from summer camp. They're all doing my head in. They are all annoying me. Uh, the idea here, of course, is that something is changing, especially with the lunar eclipse. The thing that's changing is that it's a feeling of you've been going along with something that's just not you for the longest time, Scorpio. It's almost like a while back, you cultivated this set of beliefs. You know, I believe I, I'm a good person and I believe good people behave like this. Fill in the blank, whatever way that is. But it kind of got so skewed that it, it was like a moral code or a code of conduct that was so far removed from being able to incorporate your true identity that it stopped serving you. You know, if somebody came up to you and they really, really annoyed you, you know, maybe before you'd have raised the Scorpio sting and kind of zapped them. But something happened, as I said, you cultivated a type of model of behavior which said no I will send them off with flowers and love and light, which is all lovely. It's all wonderful. But there was a real denial, <laughs> a real denial of this other side to you, Scorpio. The side to you that has the sting. Remember, you were born a Scorpio. That sting in the tail isn't just for decoration. It has a purpose. But what it seems you have been doing, and it hasn't been working to your advantage in the way that you'd hoped, is you've been silencing the sting, doing your best to not be that Scorpio. You know, the stereotypical stingy, revengey Scorpio. And you shifted way too far. And instead of integrating your darker side, you decided to disintegrate it completely. But this has to change. We're coming back around now where that sting is starting to rear up again. And you realize it's not about disintegration. It's all about integration. I will have a true and authentic feeling about my behavior. I will feel like I'm behaving in absolutely the right way when I'm not silencing the sting. I don't want to silence the sting anymore. And I think something is happening this month here, Scorpio. I don't think it necessarily has to be a very bad thing, but it's more of like a provocative feeling. Something could be very, very small. Again, it's not that the thing is big. It's the, it's when you capture the mood of it, when you capture the feeling of it, it totally transforms you and in some way liberates you, Scorpio, from this trapped moral, ethical belief that you should be the higher Scorpio who doesn't do all of that stingy stuff. No, that's for the low-level Scorpios. Bullshit. 
You're a Scorpio, as I said. You were born a Scorpio. You're shaped like a Scorpio. You've the sting of the Scorpio. And you're allowed to protect yourself in the way that the Scorpio does. Moving away, which is what a Scorpion does. It will move, move, move away and retreat. But come close. Try me, bitch. And you'll get the sting. And again, that is something that needs to be integrated rather than disintegrated. So whatever seems to be happening, be it with your home, family, relationship, work, friends, whatever the situation may be, it's a kind of, you know, well, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to be the one that kind of speaks up with all, oh, everything's going to be fine. Oh, that's no problem. I keep hearing that Scorpio, like you had adopted this persona of, oh, it's fine. It's no problem. Let's just laugh this off. And it must have been painful. It must have been difficult because it is, again, the denial of a true reaction and a true instinctual primal response from you that, that now, as I said, it has to come back. It has to come back. And I think because it has been silenced for so long, it's coming back with a major bang. It's coming back with a boom. There's my sting and I'm never going to hide it for anybody again. This is the equivalent maybe of saying, asking a Leo not to shine, asking a Scorpio not to do that thing with the stingy tail. It's like, why would you deny me that? Why would you not let me be that? Why have I not let myself be that? And how have I tried to adopt and cultivate a type of belief system that keeps me from being that? I'm a stingy bitch and that's just the way it is. And I am not embarrassed about that. And nor should I be. And in fact, I am more me when I am that. Now, just to make it clear, does that mean you have to go around and pour your wrath on everybody and just pour poison everywhere? That's not what it's about. And that's what it's never been about. It's always been about being able to be like Wednesday Adams, be in summer camp and not have to smile through the bullshit. But instead, go back to the little hut where they're playing all the happy tunes, tune it out and focus on getting the hell out of there. This is not for me. This is not my style. Why should I grin and bear this? Why should I grin and bear a situation that's going on in my life? Why should I try to adopt a happy, happy, happy attitude? I'm not happy. And don't expect me to be happy. And I'm not again going to play the game of being happy about this. Because I think what you've learned, Scorpio, that... Uh, it, it pleased a lot of people that you weren't stinging. And there's this phrase that comes in, while the cat's away, the mice do play. So people were kind of running riot. People were getting away with this, that and the other because you hadn't been stinging. And there's a feeling of, even when I'm tuning into the energy, it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes, which is a phrase often attributed to you, Scorpio. But it does feel like that. It feels like that transformation of fire. Where, oh, wake up, wake up. What the hell have I been doing? I'm not enduring this anymore. I'm not putting up with it anymore. But the thing is here, Scorpio, that even your tone, the way you're speaking had changed. It wasn't you. And now we're coming here this month with the lunar eclipse particularly, where you get that little bit of sting back, that little bit of bite, that little bit of edge, that little bit of control back into the situation. There's no shouting, there's no roaring, there's no demanding. There's just clean, a clean, a clean and direct expression of what you're really feeling on the inside. And what you're feeling on the inside, I feel, doesn't really have a lot to do with daisies and butterflies and little love and all oh, that. It's more to do with, I'm not putting up with you anymore. As I said, that type of vibe. So it's very, very strong. So that's something that you could be waking up to. And I feel I feel it's giving you power back, Scorpio, in situations where you had become powerless because you had adopted a certain type of, let's just say, a kind of spiritual persona. Now, again, I have to be careful how I say that. You know, fake spiritual. 
I'm not saying you're fake, but you know that kind of fake spirituality? The people who, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I don't think I have to explain it, but you're moving away from that. You're moving away from it very, very much so because you've had enough. You, it just doesn't work from you, for you. Now, on a positive note, some good things that could be happening with the full moon lunar eclipse in there. Some of you might see potentially a bit of an increase in something of value for you. Now, that could be money or something that you value, a relationship, someone that you value. There's a feeling of this is increasing. I'm giving it a lot of thought and energy and focus. And wherever I'm giving my Scorpio power, there's the magic. It's increasing. So that's another thing that's tied in with what I just said, Scorpio. I feel many of you have felt that this attitude the kind of love attitude, whatever it was that you had adopted, was not helping you. And when you return to being the Scorpio, the Wednesday Adams who doesn't smile through the bullshit, then something starts to increase. You're saying, oh, we're back in the game again. Here we are. We're back. I tried to be different. I tried to behave better. But it wasn't about my behavior. It was about what I give my focus to. So nobody's going to get my magic from anymore. Just the people that I love, just the situations that I love, just my family, just the projects that I'm working on, the things that I'm doing in my life that I want to pour my magic into. I want those things to increase. I want my future plans to increase. So there we are. It's a channeling, Scorpio. I really feel it. It's a, channel, a channeling back, a return of your energy a safeguarding of your energy, uh, a capturing, a recapturing, all the retrograde energy, a recapturing of your energy and holding it in and feeling strong again and saying, I'm going to use this in a whole new way. Maybe the reason why I had adopted a different way was because I wanted to tidy certain things up in my life. I didn't want to be the stingy, bitey one. Okay, but now I don't have to be either of them. I can bring it back and use this Scorpio magic to increase something of value. Again, relationships, whatever, it, friendships, situations, projects, whatever it may be. I can increase it with my magic. I am speaking increase into my life by bringing the magic home and just pouring it into that so that's very big that's quite a big change look at this guy the one who represents dogma beliefs perspectives and when it's like this it's like a belief or a perspective that didn't serve you but acted as a kind of thing that boxed you in cornered you and made you feel like the rules weren't fair and they weren't allowing you to play. Okay, okay, so you're you're escaping this feeling of being trapped, not wanting to play by the rules anymore. It's my rules from now on. <coughs> Excuse me, Scorpio. So what else is going on? Other things. Um, I'm just saying here, when it comes to relationships, for those of you in a relationship, Venus is still retrograding in Gemini. This thing of being very, very active in your partner's affairs, in their life, being very, you know, I'm bringing my energy back. It's I'm going to focus everything on my partner, everything on this relationship, and I'm going to help them in some way. Maybe if they have lost something, lost work, lost something. I think we touched upon this last month too. If they feel at a bit of a loss in all of the energy that's going on right now, it's like, uh, no, this isn't going to happen. I'm pouring my energy into making sure that you're okay and that you're safe and protected and that you're not going to lose. Not, there's a feeling I have here, a phrase of, not on my watch, baby, not on my watch. So you're going in to make sure that your partner is right on track with something. 
that they're not falling off course and, and you're on that. So that's very, very strong. Very nice. In fact, those of you in a relationship, um, there's, a, there's a real feeling of deep spirituality going on between the two of you, a very strong bond. And that could be something that's now rekindled because you're returning back to loving that aspect of yourself again, the one that you had really tried to deny. You're back in love with that. And so is your partner. <laughs> they love that in too. There's a feeling of the two of you, you know, like circling. We're in this together. It's the two of us against the world. And we're going to deal with this. We're going to cope with this. We're going to manage this. We're going to handle everything. And being very, very happy in that. Both of you being very, very content, like creating a little world that's meaningful for the two of you and you seem very, very happy for that. Now, singles, they're, of course, Venus is retrograding, but she does go di direct this month. Maybe there is a moment, a kind of last moment here where somebody from the past does reconnect with you, what, like out of the blue, wanting to recontact you again. And you are wondering, you know, is there too much of a distance? Is there too much of a divide? Has too much time passed? Uh, is there something that can be salvaged or is it gone too far? So that could be for some of you. And then for other singles, there could be a connection made with somebody who seems very far away, maybe physically in a time of quarantine, lockdown and the whole thing. It's There's a physical distance or there's something, something blocking you from just making the relationship happen. Hopefully, hopefully it's not that... You or the other person is in a relationship or in a it's complicated departure from a relationship. But there is something that is kind of blocking a connection here. Um, but it can be worked out if that's what both of you want, you know. Uh, other things that are going on. There's many, many things going on, Scorpio, and, and I feel that we should really get to them in the cards here. I'm just waiting on three more here. Venus retrograding this month as one card falls on the floor. Hold on, just let me get that, my love, one second. Yeah, one card falling down there. Venus retrograding, and she's squaring off against Mars. Venus square Mars this month. There's a feeling of a lot of that passion being stoked up in you. All the passion that we described. Um, what could be happening here, Scorpio? Just to bear this in mind, there could be a playing out of past love hurts past romantic hurts on somebody this month, be it your existing partner or somebody who just enters into your field of vision. There's a feeling of a triggering moment this month where something comes up. You're being reminded of how you were hurt before and it has to be brought up to be dealt with. But like I said, some of you could be uh, reliving that but with a different person so go easy on this person they may not have been the ones who hurt you but they're the ones that are in the theater at the moment for you to purge out some hurt from the past I do feel both for the couples and the singles there is the memory of somebody long forgotten perhaps coming back up to be dealt with it's like, I've got to get this person out of my mind once and for all. They're an ex. They're somebody from the past. They no longer belong in my life. Why do I keep behaving like I did when I was with them? There's something quite, you know, like a, a darkness between you and somebody else. And you may not even be near each other, but the memory comes up and there's a feeling of, I've got to purge this. I need to return who I was before I was with that person, before they transformed me and made me get angry about love or angry or resentful about something to do with love or who made me hide an aspect of myself. This is going to be dealt with this month. So there's a very strong feelings coming up here. I feel Scorpio, very strong feelings. You're dealing with a lot of stuff 
that's being revisited from the past. But what I like here is that there's a purging and a burning of I will not be trapped by that narrative anymore. I will not be trapped by who this ex told me I was, that I would never amount to anything, that I wasn't good enough, that I was to this, to that, to something. And then I always felt, you know, something after that, self-conscious maybe after that. I'm purging this. I'm not laboring under that anymore. I'm striking for freedom with the new moon solar eclipse happening in your ninth house. I'm striking for emotional freedom. And I'm striking to experience my life in a totally new way that involves being more open about who I really am and what I truly feel. And, and again, going back to that thing, it's more of a case of I'm not smiling along like Wednesday Adams at summer camp anymore. I'm just not putting up with that. So we have our last card. Very strong, Scorpio. A lot of purging, a lot of burning, a lot of bridges being burnt here. That should have been burnt a long time ago because you're never going back there again. So why keep that bridge up? Saturn. Saturn retrograding this month. Pluto, your ruler, retrograding in Capricorn. Capricorn is the one who constructs solid things. He constructs things. And your ruler retrograding there, Jupiter retrograding there, it would be to your good fortune to deconstruct something, to deconstruct a narrative that has always stuck with you from somebody in the past, to destroy a bridge between you and somebody who placed a painful narrative in there. So there's power here, Scorpio, power and purging and the burning of bridges. And I don't know if you did see the movie with the Adams family there. At the end, she caused mayhem because she just didn't want to go back there again. So that's what it's like. Very, very strong, Scorpio. So we've been talking too much anyway. So let's get over to your big grand. Ta-da! Your overview. <coughs> Excuse me. So there is that feeling of I've got to get my emotions steady. I've got to move on from something that has been denying me some emotional freedom. I should have the freedom to be able to say what I see, say what I think, have my opinion. And everything I say should be valid. People, I don't want... I don't want to be the one who's all kind of twinkles and fairy dust and putting on that show. And I don't want to be the one that everybody thinks is that stingy Scorpio. There's something in between. And it's about what matters to me. And to hell with what everybody else thinks. I don't have to try to get them to see me in a good light. And I don't have to try to punished them for not seeing me in a good light. There's a feeling of I don't care what any of them think anymore. What I'm more concerned with now is how I move on emotionally without not giving a damn what anybody thinks or says. I want to move into my future um, making my own decisions because I feel this thing here with this card, Scorpio, it's been very difficult for you to make a lot of decisions. Now, that was a lot of Pluto, Jupiter and Saturn had been in your third house, finding it very difficult to get clarity. How do I make these decisions? I know there are certain things going on in my life and I need to, I need to make a great big sweeping judgment call on them, but I, I can't seem to get the wheels turning. I can't come up with great ideas. I'm very stuck. So you, say, you know, it's like writer's block, like being stuck, blocked. But there's a feeling of that changing this month, Scorpio. It's like, I've done that for too long. And the, one of the big reasons why I've been stuck and blocked is because it's like I've been not being in myself I've been trying to go along with everybody, trying to please everybody, trying to be all things to all people. And I can't do it because I found that when I do that, I get nowhere. 
Nobody's happy, especially me in the end. And it destroys my creativity. It destroys my ability to just be me, the one who's just like, I know where I'm going, I know where I'm going, I know where I'm going, I've always known where I'm going. There's a feeling of what the hell happened to that? What the hell happened to this thing of next, next, I know where I'm going, I know where I'm going, I don't even have to think about it, it's just, it's just a fact. It's just a fact, there's where I'm going and that's the way I'm going. I want that back. I'm reclaiming that. I'm not second guessing my decisions anymore. I'm not second guessing my judgment. Well, is it morally correct or is it, it's, it's, fuck it, excuse my language, but no. That's, that kills something in me when I second guess myself. And I'm moving on from that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm moving on for that. And I, th I feel, Scorpio, that this, this gives you a huge level of I've completed something. I've learned something. I've finalized something. I've grown spiritually. You see, going back to that thing again, Scorpio, you thought that to grow spiritually, you had to adopt a, a certain maybe system of beliefs. Now, I'm not judging your system of belief if you follow a particular faith, but it, it was more like there were elements to it which definitely didn't suit you. And realizing then what we said earlier, don't disintegrate, integrate those aspects of yourself. And then you've, then you've grown, then you've kind of gotten the prize. For those of you who know symbolism, this is the... The shape of the coins here is the tree of life, which means that you have received the message, gone through all the kind of, you know, how do I integrate this? How do I integrate this? And you've come full circle by realizing that you can't destroy parts of yourself. You just have to learn how to use them better, how to use them more skillfully. As everything moves into Gemini, the skillful one, into your eighth house, power coming when you use your power skillfully and transform because of that. And there is your big, big completion moment. I've completed it. And here beside that, we have the new moon. This is moon in Cancer, this card here, and we've the new moon, solar eclipse and cancer on June 21st happening in your ninth house, a radical shift in how you see yourself. So it's like, boom, this is the big energy. This is the big wake up call, no longer to disintegrate, but to integrate. And you have mastered something. You have mastered how you're supposed to move in everything in your relationships, your work life, your creativity, your friendships, uh, particularly with the new moon in the ninth house, maybe some of you are thinking of um, writing, blogging, journaling, uh, studying, teaching, educating yourself or becoming an educator, cultivating and being open up to real wisdom, maybe even esoteric wisdom, deep, deep hidden wisdom and saying, why did I stop doing this? Why did I put away those books? Let me take them out again and, and get back into that again. Why did I stop playing who I really am and try to be something else? It's time to get back in. So that's huge for you, Scorpio, huge. And again, mid-month, you realize that it, it was a kind of inability to make decisions and then being at the mercy of everybody else telling you what to do and you having no control whatsoever of the outcome of certain situations because you, you couldn't speak with power or authority because you had adopted this limiting belief about yourself. But that narrative is changing. For many of you, there could be a sun, moon or ascendant in Taurus. There's a feeling of them having, uh, you know, tried to tame you. They tried to tame you or they tried to make you second guess yourself all the time. They tried to pull you up on every single thing you did until you no longer knew whether you were coming or going. Like the type of person who judged everything. 
Or even if they didn't say anything, if you do something, they'd say, oh, are you doing that? You know, you know, like when you were younger and you'd come down for the teenage disco all dressed up and one of your parents might look at you and say, are you wearing that? <laughs> you know, that type of thing. It's a feeling of, uh, yes, I'm wearing that. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, OK. <laughs> you know, um, whatever. There's a feeling of being silently judged and a kind of, you know, Oh, Scorpio, Scorpio, when will you ever learn? And this person definitely has strong, strong Taurus energy. So it could be sun, moon or ascendant. Uh, and just you turning around and saying, stop, stop. You take care of your own business. I'll take care of mine. You know, why don't you go and fix some of the things in your own life rather than coming in and judging mine? Because very often that's what people do when they can't fix their own lives. They're very, very interested in fixing other people's lives. No, it's like, bye, bye, bye. Stop making me second guess myself all the time. Stop making me feel like the baddie. I'm not. I'm not. And stop perceiving me in all the wrong light. That's another thing here, Scorpio. The feeling like there is somebody, whoever it is, family member, friend, co-worker, it's like they're always watching you. And even if they say nothing, you know that they're perceiving the worst aspect of you, which is a very sinister thing for somebody to do. They're not seeing the good qualities in you. They're not seeing the fun, the laughter, the brightness, the, the, the what you've got going on. They're not seeing that. They're just seeing what they want to see. And what they want to see isn't positive. And then it makes you feel all self-conscious, like, why are they, you know, why are they doing that to me? This is going to be cha challenged and this is going to be tackled. Now, Mars in Scorpio, what seems to be happening is that you're not putting up with this thing of holding in a resentment. If there's somebody outside of you that has been holding a grudge against you or you feel their vibes like they're resentful of, of, of something that I have or they're resentful of me in some way, even if you can't quite put your finger on it, Scorpio, there's a feeling of I don't know why they don't like me. I don't know what's going on with them, but they make me feel weird every time I'm around them, uncomfortable, like I've done something on them and I haven't done anything on them. And then it's like they want you to hold a feeling. They want you to hold that you're the bad one. And this has to be dealt with. This is not, don't, don't try to appease them. Don't try to, it's almost like they're, it's a manipulation here, Scorpio. But it, this is somebody that could be in your present, but this is also somebody that could be in your past. That could either just be brought to mind or they could actually be making contact with you again. A feeling of that person always left this thing sitting in me. They always made me feel like I was wrong or I did something on them or what I did was unforgivable or what. It's like you're holding something and it gets revisited and it's like, no, for my peace of mind, for my calm, because I actually recognize I love myself and I care for myself. I'm going to tackle this and deal with this. Sometimes this is the card of going into major overkill when you feel somebody is blaming you or uh, criticizing you unfairly. Sometimes it's even going in for the kill because you feel that somebody is trying to hang something on you or bring your name into disrepute. Uh, and there's just this feeling of I'm this is nothing to do with me and I will do whatever it takes to get this feeling out of me to purge this to clean this to bring back some sense of calm to get rid of that narrative when that person used to always tell me that I was this I was that I was the blah 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 something negative I'm getting rid of this I'm dumping that narrative but Taurus, Sun, Moon or Ascendant has a big part to play in this somehow. Now, this is a Mars in Pisces card. Now, Mars is in Pisces until June 27th. 
for your peace of mind, Scorpio, for your peace of mind, for your happiness, everything is turning around. There's a blessing coming your way, a real blessing, because it begins when you realize all the ways that your inner peace was being destroyed. Your inner peace was being destroyed by somebody who had the power to do that and maybe had the power for a long time to do that. And you're like, no, I'm bringing this home. I'm bringing this back. I'm bringing clarity on this situation. And I'm locking that down. I'm closing the doors. I'm shielding myself in. And I'm just channeling all my own power back into myself and the people that I care about and giving that back out into the world. And I will see an increase because I'm so focused and not so scattered. Scorpio, you've been giving your power away for too long to something that has hooked you. I keep feeling it like somebody who wouldn't forgive you or somebody who has always sneered at you or even if it's very, very kind of slyly subtle, a feeling of, you know, what is it with this person? That has to go. That is actually an energetic hook. And you, you're really being blessed this month by seeing that and forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself for something. Maybe you did do something to somebody. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But if you did for, let's say, and the other person wouldn't allow you to make amends with them, make peace with them. Instead, they wanted to hold this grudge forever. Just say, well, you know what? Time has passed. What's, what I'm seeing here now is that you're not a generous person. You're not a good character because you don't just want to punish me once. You want to punish me forever. So you know what? That says more about your character than mine. I'm taking that hook out. Take it back. I owe you nothing anymore and you can disappear. So there's a very strong feeling of that. You won't let me go. So I'm going to do us all a favor here and I'm going to just let you go. And I will never think of you anymore. That's very strong. But there is again this earth sign and I think it's Taurus, Sun, Moon or Ascendant. Um, there's also Leo energy here. So Leo, Taurus, Sun, Moon or Ascendant. There's somebody here. I would describe them as being quite, you know, somebody who does everything for the status or everything for the money, everything for the wealth, everything to be in line with the people who have status or power. There's an element of snobbery here. Snobbery. To them, money means everything. But it's not just like having lots of money in the bank. It's more like, you know, being able to rub shoulders with people who have money, being seen to be driving the nice car. Now, they could be broke. As we say in Ireland, they could be all fur coat and no knickers, you know. <laughs> it all looks good on the outside, but there's nothing underneath. But it's more important to them that they're giving an image of, you know, wealth, are given that image of being important. And you're saying, you know, I can't defend this anymore. This person is hungry. That's how I would describe them. They're hungry. Hungry mean bitter uh, people. And I need to let them go. They can't be part of my world anymore. Because Scorpio, that's one thing you're not. One thing you're not is that heavy, mean, hungry, you know, wanting to rub shoulders with the the ones. It, it's like, you know what I'd much rather do? I'd much rather just get on with my life without those people judging me and wondering you, know, you and making me feel unimportant or making me feel less than less than or making me feel like I owe them something. Definitely, Scorpio, this is a powerful month for everybody, but for you, you're eliminating 
It's like power is coming back to me and I have nothing to do with any of that or any of those situations or any of those people anymore. I am writing myself a letter. Dear me, you have full permission to tell them all to kiss my Scorpio arse. With love, me. <laughs> And then that's it. There's your permission slip. It's done. It's over. You can be excused from, you know, the class. It's done. It's a big shift. It's a big change. And and you'll get some real good level of power and clarity back once you do it. So, my love, I'm going to leave it at that. Now, you know, of course, these are just the general energies of a very, very powerful month. But to get into the details, you know by now where to come. Come and join me over on Vimeo at The Deep Read, where we will give a huge level of focus to all the different themes and topics in your life. Your current relationships, we'll focus on that. The singles, will give a, a real eagle eye to that to see where the love might be found this month and yeah it is possible even in these strange times your money and your career we have the lunar eclipse of course in your second house of money and value so something might be happening there an increase we hope um, we'll focus on home family and friends and everything else that we don't touch upon here we'll give it a deep amount of focus in the deep read on the mail how do you get to it open the description box you'll see a link there click into it come on over I'll meet you over there and we'll get stuck into it. But if we're going to leave it at that for now, for this month, my beautiful, have a wonderful and very powerful month. Change that narrative and get yourself back on track to being who you truly are. No more disintegrating who you are, but start integrating who you are. And my love, I will leave you as always with all my love and a great, great, great big kiss from me to you. Mwah. Until next month, my beautiful, bye.